What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts, and I'm back with another video today. We've got the start of our 2020 film review series. I'm going to be taking a look at some of the most important Texans going forward and, you know, reviewing what they did well how we can use them better, and what they can still work on to improve. So today we're breaking down Lonnie Johnson as you guys want, and we're going to look at his move to safety, right? And the first thing I want to say is this coaching staff has done Lonnie dirty. Giving up on his one year at playing cornerback, the hardest defensive position to translate to in the NFL. And what's even worse is he trained all offseason as a cornerback. There was no communication. But then they just throw him to the wolves and he has to make the best out of a bad situation. He didn't complain though. He just put his head down and he worked. So I respect that. And his work ethic and his natural athleticism is what makes me confident in his ability to make this transition to full-time safety. So I'll get into that. But if you enjoy the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Now, let's break down the 2020 film of Lonnie Johnson because the film don't lie. So let's start with my plan for how I think we can best utilize Lonnie's skill set. His physical attributes, you know, size, speed, and tenacity, that's always been really intriguing, right? So let's play to those strengths. And we saw this occasionally throughout the year, but when the Texans blitzed Lonnie, he had success. He had 22 blitzes on the year, but by my counting, 18 of those came in just three games. The Pats, the Lions, and the Colts. Those three games in a row. That wasn't a coincidence if you ask me, but that's a bigger rant for another day. On those 22 blitzes, Lonnie registered three pressures, three quarterback knockdowns, and multiple occasions where you know he forced the quarterback to make a quicker throw or take a check down. He wasn't able to make the big highlight plays that we'd love to see, you know, a sack and forced fumble, but this was his first time really blitzing heavily in his career. He's got to learn the nuances of it because there are little tendencies to learn. And that's sort of the theme of the video. Let Lonnie learn. We gotta be patient with him at safety, you know, hire a legit DB coach and sign some vets to help him learn as well. The potential is high, and I really hope the new coaching staff will lean into this blitzing ability and even look to Jamal Adams, the best blitzing safety in the league, as an archetype. Now I'm not saying Lonnie is as good as Adams, he's an all pro for crying out loud, but the physical attributes are eerily similar, almost identical height and weight. Lonnie actually has the edge on him in some athletic testing like the 40 yard dash plus the vertical and broad jump. So he brings a similar level of speed and explosiveness that we see makes Jamal so damn dangerous. And looking to Jamal's film, there's definitely things that Lonnie can learn from and implement himself. Jamal is always flying off the edge, but then he knows when to throttle down, get low, and bend the corner so that those pressures turn into sacks and he's not just pushed past the quarterback. In addition, Jamal is more than just an athlete He's very advanced with his hand usage when pass rushing. He's going to use a ghost dip move here where he flashes his hand up and look how that gets the offensive lineman fooled. Thus he's off balanced and Jamal can win the corner around him. That's a super advanced move even for a pass rusher, but it's not something that Lonnie can't learn. Now another huge difference between Adams and Lonnie is power and brute strength in my opinion. We saw at the Combine, Jamal benched a few more reps than Lonnie, and you know, it makes sense. He's been a safety all his career, and safeties need to be stronger than cornerbacks. It is what it is. And we see that strength on the film as well. When he's matched up versus an offensive lineman, he'll try and go around them. But when he has a tight end, he knows he can overpower. Jamal's going straight through you. Look how he transfers his speed to power and just bull rushes the poor guy. He uses his long arms, which Lonnie also has, strikes right into the chest, runs his feet, and boom, embarrasses the dude. Adams is a strong and powerful player, but Lonnie is a big dude himself. He's got the frame an extra inch of height on Jamal for him to continue to put on more muscle. Now Adams also makes a great impact in the run game. If Lonnie's going to play in the box more, he needs to work on his run keys, and that can really only happen with more reps, 
film study, and coaching. But we see here a trend that most NFL defenses adopted this year, and that is blitzing a DB off the edge to give them an advantage versus the run. You can see Lonnie times this perfectly, exploding off his back leg as soon as the ball is being snapped. The wide receiver doesn't expect Lonnie to blitz, thus is caught off guard, and can't make his block. Blitzes like this killed us throughout the season, and I would love for the Texans to embrace this role more for Lonnie. Have him put on an extra 5 to 7 pounds of muscle, make sure it's sustainable of course, and see if he can really be our Jamal Adams. Let's move on though and talk about Lonnie's tackling in this Adams role, you know, you've got to be a secure tackler. And Lonnie lowered his missed tackle rate from last year to 8.4%. And the film shows that like I said, you know, he's going 100 miles per hour a lot of the time. But that's not always what you want. And when he was going super fast and looking for that big hit, he had more of a tendency to miss. However, his missed tackle numbers, they went down, right? And that's because he was able to, you know, start off fast, but then throttle down and take his time with the tackle. He was much more secure that way. This is how we need to coach him up. Tell him to, yes, break on the ball fast, but when you get a few yards closer to the offensive player, slow down, square up, track the inside hip, go low, and wrap up. He's shown he knows how to do it. It's just about consistently slowing down. And that will come with time and getting more comfortable with the transition to safety so that the speed of the game does slow down for him in the heat of the moment. Now let's talk about Lonnie in coverage and again, I think the coaching staff utilized his skills horribly. They threw him into the single high safety role, which is a very, very tough role because you have to be perfect. With your eyes, with your anticipation, with your pursuit angles. There's a reason why there were so few elite single high safeties in the NFL, and we saw the expected struggles that come with learning that position. Versus the Jags in week 9, the quarterback is going to stare down DJ Chark the entire way. And you'd think that, you know, a rookie 6th round pick quarterback is going to lean on his wide receiver one, right? So Lonnie is definitely worrying about DJ Chark here, but he doesn't know that Chark is going to break outside at this point. And since he has inside leverage on Hargraves, Lonnie really has to play this disciplined and not cheat either way. He needs to be in position to help inside, so he does that part good. But like I said, your pursuit angle is so, so pivotal as a single high safety. And you'll see Lonnie takes more of a conservative and rounded angle. See how he goes backwards at first? He could have taken this just one step flatter and met Shark at the catch point, potentially breaking it up. That's the tough part about safety play. One step really makes all the difference. And here's exactly what I mean. Similar idea here where Lonnie needs to drive downhill. And instead of taking a rounded angle, he just flies downhill instantly. He reads this the entire way and breaks on the ball before Minshew ever even thinks about throwing it. Those instincts to read a play are harder to teach than the pursuit angle, so it gives me reason for optimism about his future at safety. But like I said earlier, I think single high safety is tough to transition to, and since I believe he's more suited for that Jamal Adams role, let's not ask him to play that single high all the time. We saw more reasons for optimism throughout the season when Lonnie was in a two high shell. Here we're running cover four and this tight end is going to run a post trying to settle in this area of the field. It's a good call versus a middle of field open defense, but Lonnie reads it perfectly and is in position to make that a tough catch. So while I like him in the box to blitz, you know, any defense needs to have some sort of variety with how they deploy their safeties. So when Lonnie isn't in the box blitzing, let's run two high looks, not single high. Where he needs to improve with these zone coverages is just getting rid of that split second hesitation. That hesitation is the difference between a tackle and a pass breakup, and it's something that should come with seeing more in-game reps. This time coming down into the box, he needs to watch the quarterback's eyes, but at the same time have a sense of the routes on the field. He shouldn't be taking that slight step back, but just drive on the slant route in front of him. Let Lonnie learn these little nuances in the game and that'll help improve his coverage, where he already lowered the quarterback passer rating allowed when he was targeted from last year. So we talked about zone, let's get to man coverage quickly, and again I saw some good and bad. 
where he's good is when the play is in front of him and he can run, chase, and make a tackle. Here the Colts are trying to set up a rub route, which usually kills us. But Lonnie takes a great angle to get above it and secure the tackle. Again, when Lonnie can see everything happening in front of him, he's quick to react and is in really tight coverage here. But that's just a perfect throw and perfect catch. Lonnie can work on timing when to attack the ball, but this is about all you can ask from him here. In addition, Lonnie does good when he can stay on top of the tight end's shoulder and he can really nullify you know, a sharp break. Versus Eric Ebron, he jams him, getting his hands into Ebron's chest. This prevents the clean release and makes Ebron's job much tougher. When Lonnie isn't in a position where he's chasing the receiver vertically downfield, he can be in very tight coverage. However, when he misses with those hands and doesn't throw the tight end off his path, he can get in trouble. When he's forced to flip his hips and run, it gets him a step behind. See how he's not able to stay attached to the top shoulder of the tight end? Then boom, separation when he does make his cut. There are little technical things that Lonnie does need to clean up and improve upon to be the best version of himself, but everything is coachable. You get a legit DB coach who knows what he's doing and he can fix these relatively quickly, I do believe that. There was nothing working in Lonnie's favor last year. Nothing. A coaching staff who forced him into a completely new position with no warning. A defensive coordinator who played him at the safety position with the least margin of error. And no position coaches that knew what the hell they were doing to help him. But despite all that, Lonnie still showed promise and his potential is high because of his athleticism, flashes of instincts, and work ethic. Please be patient with him and let Lonnie learn. Alright, that's going to do it for the video. If you enjoyed, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Question of the day is, which coach do you think would get the most out of Lonnie Johnson? We know he's got a favorite. Shout out all the Texans Thoughts team members. If you want to join the team, it's a $3.99 monthly membership um, with a bunch of exclusive perks. You know, hit the join button below the video if you want to check it out. All right, take care, everyone. Come back for more. And remember the film, don't lie.